The season 5 finale was a thing that happened and that I observed with my eyeballs, and it was pretty good. I really liked it. It was definitely a bit more low-key compared to some of the other finales we've had as of late, and it was great to see a finale where shooting rainbows and purifying the enemy wasn't the answer. And of course, the big highlight of the whole thing was being able to see all those really interesting what-if scenarios starring past villains, some of which actually had more presence and threat than when they made their debut. I mean, there was Chrysalis, and Sombra, and Flim and Flam. Yes, the true downfall of Equestria will come not from an overwhelming force of darkness and depravity, but from the machinations of two conmen. I'd buy it. And of course, there was the future that made every single Luna fan squee in utter delight, the one where Nightmare Moon won, banishing her sister to the moon and blanketing the Earth in eternal night. Enter A Different Kind of Mentor by Jay the Brony, a short little story that presents us with a what-if conversation for the what-if scenario. what if -ception. And what exactly takes place in this story? Not much. The entire story takes place during the time that Twilight was captured by Nightmare and forced to lead her to the area where the time travel spell could be used so she could get back in time and secure her throne even earlier. This story lays out a potential conversation between Twilight and Nightmare, wherein Nightmare Moon expounds on how sheer, raw strength is more than a match for what friendship could be. Starting off, the title and description of the story raises a lot of expectations, ones that are very difficult to match in a word count of less than 1400 words. I'm not saying it's impossible, but I am saying that if you're going to make a grandiose promise, you gotta be sure that you can keep it. Unfortunately, the fic doesn't really measure up. I'll say up front, it is not poorly written at all. It has some very nice description, it doesn't waste words, it could very easily fit into canon in between the scenes it's taking place in, and I think that Jay has a good grasp of both Nightmare and Twilight's voices. I only wish that what they had to say was a bit more interesting. Well, okay, that's not really fair. What they're talking about, the idea that one's own strength and power is a more valid way of solving problems than the power of friendship, is certainly an interesting concept, especially within the context of a world where friendship, literally, is magic. The problem is, it's a concept that has been explored in depth since the first season, and seems to make a return every single time a new powerful villain crops up in the show. I'm pretty sure we even have some stories exploring the concept between Twilight and Starlight Glimmer. Or, as my good friend Scribbler calls her, That might be what Twilight Ponyface is um, is going to go off and find. She's run away and she's going to go and find the other eight items. And... Twilight <laughs> Ponyface, Starlight. I can't remember her name! <laughs> Sorry, Scribbler, but I will never forget that line. Heck, there were a few fix exploring the concept between Celestia and Nightmare Moon back when Season 1 was as good as it got. What I'm saying is that if you want to write a story with a central theme around power versus friendship, it's got to be real intriguing to stand out. This story is about as basic as it gets, with Nightmare Moon delivering a lecture on her life philosophy to Twilight during their walk. It doesn't really expand upon its proposed idea, and it isn't even presented in the format of a debate. Hence the title, it's more like a teacher talking to a student. I'll say that I like the way that Nightmare Moon is written in this story, constantly referencing her sister and her philosophy, pointing out how she can tell that Twilight was her student just by listening to her speak, and even praising Twilight on her magical talent and prowess. What I don't like is how meek Twilight is. Like I said, the conversation is pretty one-sided, with Twilight, when she does speak, letting out soft, short sentences, not even really bothering with attempting to debate Nightmare's points, and given the sort of mare that Twilight is, and the resistance that she showed in the episode when first meeting Nightmare in the castle, I can guarantee she would not just sit back and take what Nightmare's saying to her at face value. And yet, at the end of the story, that's exactly what she does. I can understand Twilight being contemplative, especially when faced with a new way of thinking that she is unfamiliar with, but given everything that she's been through and her own philosophy, the way that the story ends, with her walking along brooding over what's been told as though she had just had her worldview rocked, strikes me as very forced. I could almost buy it if Nightmare Moon was meant to be some sort of extremely charismatic villain, but she's not. Not really. The opening narration even makes it clear that she controls others more through fear than through charm. 
when it comes down to it, this feels more like the first layer of a far more interesting conversation. Like I said before, this is not a badly written story. It has some nice flow, it doesn't waste words, and I love how Nightmare Moon is written. But I come away from this little story thinking to myself, well that was a thing. It doesn't make me feel anything, and it certainly doesn't get me thinking the way I feel it's trying to. I'd love to see the concept expanded, but it's a concept that has already been done much better in a lot of other stories. It's fine for a quick read, but not much else. I'd recommend it, but temper your expectations and don't expect anything very new or interesting.